Hello, everyone. Welcome to Next Big Future. 2025 is a year of robotaxi. Not just um, Brian Wong saying this. Um, Altimeter Capital, Brad Gerstner, uh, has pretty much said that. And he's put a billion dollars towards buying Tesla um, because of his belief. And we're going to go over that. And we'll talk about it with um, Randy Kirk. And let's get into it. And then we'll um, show a few slides. And then we'll discuss how, what that means, how fast it happens, what happens to the stock, um, all that good stuff. So um, we've seen the cyber cab. Um, that probably won't be in 2025, but that'll be 2026, but um, maybe late 2025. But we'll have Model 3s and Ys uh, all doing uh, FSD, maybe better than human. So Altimeter Capital, um, Brad Gerstner on the uh, right there in the cowboy hat. He and Bill Gurley do a podcast. They do 20 episodes. And um, Brad uh, manages over $10 billion in, in funds. And um, he, he had about a billion dollars worth of Uber. And he came on to CNBC or something like that and said that he sold all of his Uber to buy Tesla because he believes, um, that, and his team has researched, that um, Robotaxi, Tesla Robotaxi, unsupervised, will be fully solved um, next year. And these guys are nothing if they're not geeks when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, the computerized things, AI, all the rest. They they are way over my head. I listen when I listen to them. I'm like, OK, I can barely keep up with what they're talking about. <laughs> and um, if them selling Uber, the big deal, because they were in Uber, I think, from before it was public, you know, from the very beginning um, in an Uber toy, believe in it know everything about, you know, time of day, when things are shifting around. They know all the financials of Uber. So for them to say, and they still, you know, Brad still loves Uber as a company, but right. he feels that the Tesla Robotaxi is an extinction level event yes. for possibly Uber, um, many of the car companies, maybe three or four will survive after. He did caveat it because, oh, maybe things don't change. Maybe I don't know. But if obvious when he's saying that he doesn't believe that anymore otherwise he wouldn't have sold a billion dollars worth of uber so so do you think do you think uh just as a as a quick aside do you think the run-up on tesla uh on uh friday the 22nd being today maybe if people are watching this today you think mm -hmm. that the run-up today was a delayed response to that video um i think that, that definitely played the part of it also friday is the option Day. Right, right. So a lot of people playing options. There's a lot of um, people who, you know, since Q3 have loaded into Tesla options. So Friday, you can have movement just because of that, you know, gamma squeeze, all that kind of stuff. Where Gamma squeeze being if um, all sorts of people and institutions buy millions of uh, call options saying that we're bidding an upside for it, the market makers have to buy stock in order to fulfill. Right. Right. So there's a bunch of that stuff playing around with it because there's so much stuff is going on. That's why there's these big movements up and down. Um, but the, I think the clear story is if he also agrees with Elon that middle of 2025 is when this is solved and unsupervised, then you have now like a seven month March to when the ARK invest unsupervised robot taxi story take, takes place. And you have, Clearly, uh, Brad, Brad Gerson qualifies as smart money. Right, right, right. So, uh, so for people who don't, don't know, like in um, technical trading, people are looking at the price movement as actions and they're saying, okay, you know, there's a um, uh, BX trender showing, which was an indicator that shows how much institutional accumulation is occurring in a mm -hmm. stock. Mm -hmm. But here, you don't have to read a chart to say, you know, did that mean institutions bought something? It's like the guy made a podcast, went out to CNBC and said, I sold it. I bought a billion dollars with a Tesla. You know, it's like he's slapping in the face with it. I bought it and I'm now, I make a podcast and over an hour long with a chunk, 10, 15 minutes in the middle saying, here's why it's going to happen. Right, right, right. So, and then we discuss what ways it's going to happen. So, sure. Alma Capital estimates that the Tesla with the FSD 13 will reach 15,000 miles per disengagement, pretty much catching up with the 20,000-ish that Waymo has, right? Nice. And 
Brad is not depending upon himself. He has people researching it, you know, spending, you know, expensive analysts, you know, going in, checking the car, videotaping, you know, video them and, and making sure they know exactly what's happening with that. So he's using data to confirm his beliefs. Right. Okay. And then he says 100,000 miles per critical disengagement by Q1 of 2025. 13.5 or 14, you know, that's what he's uh, estimated to happen. And then 500 miles per critical disengagement by middle of this year. Same thing that um, Elon has said. Okay, all right. That, uh, and, and also Tesla AI, but he's talking the same kind of, kind of thing. So then 5,000 miles per critical disengagement, that is human, average human level, right? But removing a human driver, a supervised driver, and saying, okay, now we can do unsupervised, um, okay, they're, and they're doing supervised driving now with um, right with the uh, people. Um, they said they may not be safe enough because even though you're getting the same number of accidents, possibly the fact that you're getting an accident without a driver is is maybe worth uh, worse in terms of the lawsuits and stuff like that. Hmm. So people think, well, you can't just do it at that point. His argument is that you do it in the areas like California or Texas where you have more cars, more data. So you're even better than this metric. You know, you're at that level globally, but, you know, you're even better, 2x, 3x safer in California and in Texas where you have more vehicles, more data. And then the other thing is you make it drive safer. You turn the, the, the settings so that it's, you know, not falling as closely, driving a bit slower. Something that... um people would disengage from and say, okay, you're driving too much like a granny. Right. You know, I'm in the car, I'm take, going for a ride, but I don't like granny driving. I want you to go closer to, to my more aggressive driving, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if you're a passenger, they can say, screw that. You're not going to disengage because I'm not giving that option. And I'm going to um, drive safer. Right. And you're still going to get there, but you're going to be able to get there like uh, five minutes later. But you'd be there safe. Yes, you'd right? be a chauffeur, chauffeur driven. Chauffeur driven. It's also like if I'm a passenger on a public bus, mm -hmm. I'm just hanging on, I'm sitting there, I'm doing whatever. I'm not saying, hey, the bus driver should have made that uh, turn or should have pushed faster ahead. It's like I'm passenger, right? I'm not, only if they do something absolutely freaking crazy do I start screaming, hey, what are you doing, right. driver? Right. 99% right? Right. of the time, I'm saying, I'm just sitting here. Yeah. I'm just so and then people say well if they don't have a steering wheel don't have a driver what happens to get stuck or something like that there will be um remote drivers right so that it which is people don't know all the other waymo uh crews the um all the chinese car companies that have robo taxi <clears throat> they all have remote drivers right. someone with a kind of like a gaming console with multiple screens that takes over with a little steering wheel remotely that takes over the driving. And then um, by next year, um, early next year, January, um, maybe even in December this year, um, all the Teslas will have Grok 3. Right. Right? You know, they can put in Grok 2 now. And yep. you can then talk to it and say, do something. Hey, I don't like this. Pull over. Do something. So then you will have control, voice-activated control over the vehicle, even though you're a passenger. Yeah, you can remote, say, hey, yeah, yeah the, re, the remote driver, we learned yesterday, actually, from Tesla, that they were hiring somebody to run that that part of the business. Right. So they, they've announced that there will be a remote capability. Right. So so pretty much we're heading to and this is a, a so chart. I was wondering, I was wondering, I was wondering, did those guys also bring up the idea that Tesla could could uh, not take certain rides? Uh, you yeah, know, you yeah, can, that's right. You decide, they can. They can they can choose the route. They can yeah. say, hey, I don't, I don't like this route. It, it has risks on it. I'm right. going to go some other way. I'm going to do three right turns or whatever instead of this left turn, um, you know, or four, four, four five, whatever turns. Um, and then, yeah, if they say go to whatever location, it could always, like I, I've been in um, taxis or Uber where I want to go to wherever, but they drop you two blocks away or they right. pick you up two blocks away, right? It's like- or or before, or before the ride ever starts, they could just yeah. not accept the ride. They, right. they can see in the computer that this is a problem. It's by weather, by flooding, by by some kind of road conditions, and they could yeah. just not take the ride. Nobody would ever know. Right, right. <laughs>
uh, and if you have a mix of um, some, you know, a tiny fraction of supervised and and mostly unsupervised, then they can send the the one that's supervised. Yes, so you, of course. You still take the ride, and the, you still have the thing. So many, many options for making this work. Right. Um, this was also created by a chart created by Frida Dwan, who works for Brad Gerstner, or okay. the partner with him, or whatever, where she went and analyzed it all, and a hundred times from beginning of the year, January twenty. 24, 12.1, 100 times better by Q3, 12.5. Mm -hmm. And now they think it's going to be five to six times better to in Q4 for version 13. Um, still not quite to the human level, but they, they expect this two major steps up to better than human by Q2. They think maybe a version 14 at that point. Um, Got it. So this is the chart where they think it's going to happen. And then this is all the the billion driving miles that, that Tesla is getting to achieve this goal. And they'll have even more. They should probably get to like a billion miles per month um, by uh, next year, uh, middle of next year, something like that. So how big, how fast? So right now you need hardware four or also now called AI four. Um, there's about two and a half million cars like that now of the 7 million cars total. Um, but then all the new cars will have hardware four. So if you add in 1.2 million cars by over the next six months, then you'll you know you get close to four million hard AI four hardware four cars okay. um, in in the in the world. Right. Um, roughly half between U.S., China, some in Europe, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then they've talked about upgrading hardware three. Right. So the hardware three cars is talking about swapping out the chip. So. Um, that would be just a, a service call or something like that, or maybe they drive out to you and, and then do some kind of replacement uh, where they swap out the, the chip to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and they say they would do it for free. Right. And, but it, and then a rough estimate of if I have a million cars doing unsupervised robotaxi at about 50,000 um, miles, ballpark, you can get about $30 billion of profit to, to Tesla for those million cars. Um, they made ten billion dollars net income this year, mm -hmm. so then if you get to a million cars, that would be triple your your um, net income. Right. So then the question um, is, when do you get to that million cars? Right. Right. And, How and fast? Are you and are you basing this on uh, is your thirty billion idea based on customer owned vehicles or our Tesla fleet or some combination? This would be um, based on a driving miles calculation. Of driving fifty thousand miles per vehicle, which is less usage than a full up uh, taxi. Yes. Um, and then, assuming like a buck fifty or so per per mile, so mm -hmm. cheaper than Uber, right. and then um, having more profit because of no driver, etc. But the, but you, you, about half the profit. So you half the profit between half the profit between them and and other other um, car owners. Okay, right. Yeah. So, so some, Tesla gets some Tesla fleet and some B and B, if you are Airbnb type, Airbnb right? type thing. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. And then they discussed, um, you know, Brad Gerstner and Bill Gurley talked about, well, maybe people don't want to sign up for it. You know, Bill Gurley was really thinking that maybe they don't like the fact that a car got trashed, you know, puked in, other stuff like that. You know, smells or whatever that when it's coming back. That a lot of people don't want to handle that. Just like. Many people don't want to manage an Airbnb right. where, you know, the person trashed the place. You got to like change the towels, do all that stuff in between um, guests. So Brad's point is that people and companies, you know, he referred to them as like, um, you know, some tech bros would say, hey, I'll, I'll, you know, four of us will manage 100 vehicles for the 100 people owned by other people, but we'll take 10% for cleaning it out and, and managing it and getting it out between people where they, they you know, you hand over the, you know, the app, you know, you assign, okay, I'll let you have the car for the next 36 hours, something like that, right. or just eight hours, something like that. And they'll run it and then clean in between, manage it, re, you know, recharge it, and then give it back to you. Which now, is ideally, which is, already, which is already happening with Airbnb. That's been really a long, long time. Yes. Right. And then they would also um, um, look at, you know, they would, the people who manage it would probably choose 
where you like let them have it over a full weekend, you know, they would prefer to have, have it the car for a longer period of time so they could, you know, manage it more completely. But, you know, that market will sort itself out, you know, like how much people want to use it and, and people decide how much they want money to make. Yes. Exactly. And Brian, as I was thinking about this the other day, you know, obviously Tesla makes a lot more money on these if it's Tesla fleet than they do if it's Airbnb type mm -hmm. uh, consumer owned cars. Yeah. They make, a, I mean, a lot more money per car, but mm -hmm. I think they feel an obligation to do what they've always promised, which is to make it available to that crowd. Um, and there's, you know, the TAM is probably going to grow slowly. Uh, you know, the the actual TAM as opposed to the ultimate TAM, the, the beginning TAM will grow slowly. Um, and so I think they'll want to see how many people will, in fact, take advantage of the opportunity. And I think there'll be people, as we you and I've talked about before, entrepreneurial types that will buy these vehicles and make smaller fleets. They'll buy used vehicles. They'll buy them from Tesla um, and, and, grow, and grow smaller fleets. Uh, compared to, say, Tesla's fleet. But ultimately, if Tesla doesn't feel like the market is being addressed quickly enough, I yeah. think they'll just start putting out lots and lots and lots of of owned vehicles. Uh, right. they'll, have, they'll have capacity and they'll right. just start really jamming out a lot of, and that's just going to be better for the stockholders and better for Tesla. Right, right. So that, I think that the range of small to big, my last point on the slide for not bother bringing it up again, is that, Uber, Didi, Apollo Go. Apollo Go is a robo taxi company run by Baidu over in China. There's like ten of them over there. They were looking to get you know thousands of vehicles this coming year, right? But they would then get, in my belief, Teslas instead, mm -hmm. and they would go even bigger because they are not building those vehicles. They are getting those vehicles from partners like Toyota, Volkswagen, Stellantis, um, Baidu, uh, or um, a BYD or whatever, whatever, you know, they're getting vehicles from other companies and then they're getting the chips and software from NVIDIA, right. you know, so it's like, they're like assembling the thing. They're not like, right. Like Tesla vertically integrated and making the whole thing. So for them, it's like, I buy from supplier A, I buy from supplier B, I buy from supplier Tesla because Tesla thing works. Right. And, and, and fully and it's cheaper and all that kind of stuff. So yes, you have five, 10, Guy, you know, guys buying five to ten vehicles to operate themselves. You have slightly bigger groups operating a few hundred, and then you'll have a um, Uber buying a million vehicles or five hundred thousand vehicles, or you know, Didi buying at that number, and then uh, Apollo Go buying a hundred thousand. So, like these whole range of other partners for Tesla, small to big, that would be buying vehicles, and then it's Tesla's option to decide, you know, if they want the full range, you know, who they want to partner with. They could say, okay, you know, um, for whatever reason, I don't choose to partner with these guys or I change the, the terms because I want more, you know, like they can adjust how they deal with um, different uh, companies and people. So one of the big objections, uh, I saw Gary Black today, of course, he says, you know, you have to solve FSD before he's going to get excited. But I think, you know, Brad Gerstner knows a lot more about it than uh, Gary does. And if Brad Gerstner think it's going to be solved in six months, I, I, I would uh, I, I would put a lot of stock <laughs> yeah. into that into that statement. Um, but the other the other issue that people bring up is they think it'll be a slow rollout because there'll be a learning curve. And quite frankly, I made that same statement about six months ago. The deeper and the deeper that I go into it, just as a thought experiment, in addition to listening to other people like you and 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 Bradford and 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 Brad Gerstner and you know and I listen to what people are saying about some of the solutions. Like for instance, the re I I started talking about remote drivers. Um, I want to say six months ago, I said there would be. I said there absolutely will be some kind of remote capability on these vehicles, and there will be a human that you will be able to get to in these vehicles. And there is no, they won't need that. They're, it's not a purist enough for Elon. And I'm like, no, they're gonna anyway. All the solutions are really there already, and that's with. We're not even in the office. We're not even in the lab. We're not even, you know. Mm -hmm. They're talking about it in in the in the in the in at at Tesla. Yeah, they are already experimenting with it and seeing what these real problems are. Right. Um, somebody yesterday, I talked about this with Brad last night, Bradford last night on the show. If people want to go back and look at it, 
um, we were talking about, uh, you know, really bad snow mm -hmm. where you might obscure, you know, the, uh, the, the camera. cameras. Okay. I've been in that snowstorm where it was obscuring my windshield. <laughs> yeah. I've been in sand, a sandstorm in going over to Phoenix one time that was so bad that I was afraid that I was just going to get hit in the back by somebody mm -hmm. because they wouldn't be able to see me. I didn't even know where to go or how to get off the freeway. Yeah. Um, I've been in fog where I had to open the door of my car to find the curb <laughs> so I can mm -hmm. pull the car over to the curb. Yeah. So those are situations where no taxi cab drives. Right. So you're not going to drive. You're not going to take rides when right. you've got those kind of situations going on. You're just not going to do it. Right. Um, so that's, I mean, there's there are solutions for pretty much every one of these problems that we're talking about. And mm -hmm. Tesla's going to know those solutions when the time comes. I don't think it's going to be a slow rollout at all. Right. I think they're going to roll it out as fast as they can. Well, we, we found out um, that they have been operating supervised yeah. robotaxi in California and Texas right. for the yeah. past year. Yeah. You know, I don't know how many, you know, hundreds, yeah. a thousand. They have 20,000 employees in California, in, in mostly in Fremont, and they have like, uh, you know, 30,000, 40,000 in Texas. Yeah. So if you were to actually just give all of them commute rides and some for the family, you're already at 160,000 rides per week. Right. which is, you know, as much as uh, Waymo does. Right. So they can rapidly get to really big scale. And they've been, I say, learning in supervised mode for, for a full year. So that small phase is already kind of happening. And when uh, they get to the unsupervised level, when they figure it's time and, you know, they're, they, they, fit, you know, they could put, they could tell those guys that are, are the supervisors in those cars, Hey, mm -hmm. put your, cross your legs on the seat and put your hand, put your arms like this. Yeah. You're, we still want you in the car because we don't want the cops to pull you over. But don't touch that wheel and don't touch those pedals. We got to see if this thing works for thousands and thousands of miles. Right, right. Yeah. So they're already getting a lot, a lot of data, and you know, now it appears both China had the national robotaxi um, uh, regulation. Right? right, they say okay, you need to have one. Uh, every three cars need to have one uh, remote driver and they have all these rules about that. And it looks like um, very soon in February, uh, March, you'll have a cross us similar program. So it, if they well, get you know, the FSD you know, licensing, you know. you know, the UN is putting together one also. Okay. I didn't know that one. Yeah. Yes. So the United Nations is putting together an automation an automated, uh, not necessarily for robo taxis, but rather for autonomous vehicles. What does it take uh, what, mm -hmm. what 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 should the rules be? What should they look like in terms of taking a, the driver out? And it sounds like while Europe is working on their own and Australia was working on their own, now it turns out that a bunch of countries like Australia, Canada, Mexico, et cetera, they're just going to take the UN rule, whatever it is. So mm -hmm. that also is apparently about ready to, uh, to come out. Well, that goes to the fact that all the countries, like if, if China and the U.S. go, number one, number two economy in the world, right. they say, here it is. We're going hard for robotaxi. We both right. want it. You right. know, Xi Jinping has wanted it for a couple right. of years. You know, Trump wants it. He can come in and, and do that. So then um, all the other countries, even if they, they had reservations about it, will say, well, we have to go too. Like, no, we can't, we'd be economically disadvantaged if we don't, you know, try to do this. So then it could be a more of a race to the bottom of like everyone – doing as much as they can. So also you can have like countries choosing to to buy um road tax. Just like there's national chat GPT AI type programs that you'll this becomes a, a competitive technological advantage. If it's really arrives, sure. then it's like, you know, buy a hundred thousand vehicles because you can make um cities more efficient. Like if I was to, to have only robo taxi in downtown. Mm -hmm. Where I park on the outside, or something like that. you know, it's like there's situations where you can make your cities uh, more efficient, right? Mm -hmm. Your your road layout, all that kind of stuff. So there's, and then also you're reducing the number of um, accidents and deaths and and property damage from the car insurance. China has about seven percent of their GDP on car fatalities, car injuries, and and, uh, 
and probably damage from cars. Yeah. So these are like huge numbers that as a country you'd want to get to the other side of where, yeah. There's another interesting twist. Uh, a video came out yesterday. It's already got over a million views. This is a guy who is a big uh, bicycle advocate and I should appreciate him having spent my entire career, at least partially involved in the, in the bicycle industry throughout the entire time. Um, and uh, so he's, uh, you know, talking about how uh, automated cars are great, except that they're going to be, you know, so many more of them on the road because people won't even think about, uh, you know, getting their their uh, in and out burgers delivered to their house when it only costs three bucks to get right. it delivered instead of 10 bucks. So it'll be, uh, you know, massive, massive increase in the in the number of uh, cars actually out there. Um, and that caused me to realize, well, there you go. That'll make uh, uh, another one of Elon, Elon's companies that much richer because they'll have to build a bajillion tunnels to get these cars below ground. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I think um, that if you had a fully um, robotaxi, you know, perfect FSD on the roads, I think you could, even with the increased usage, you would reduce the, the total number of vehicles because you would... You know, it would do the ride for, or do the delivery for you, delivery for someone else. And then, you know, you'd be able to aggregate, you know, a bunch of those trips and stuff like that. And yeah, then also vehicles, vehicles on the road, I think, as opposed to total vehicles. So vehicles on the road during, let's say, the regular hours of mm -hmm. commerce might mm -hmm. go up, uh, according to this guy's analysis. But if okay. it did, I still think I still think it's a good idea to to put the tunnels in. Um, get those yeah. things on the ground. I'm 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 100 for that. Yeah, that's still going to take a, a while because um, you know they're just trying to speed up to the finish the the Vegas set of tunnels in maybe a year or two. Yeah. So getting to a lot of cities would be take um, quite a while. I think I you know we can scale up. Yeah. Yeah. But I understand Elon plans to build like a hundred thousand proof. What do they call them? Proof, proof rock. rocks. Tunnels, build, build, machines, build, yeah. like, you know, like a million of them or whatever, and they'll just be out there everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Elon. Well, that, that'd be good because it would be like a multi layer thing. So basically, yeah. it's like uh, our roads are now like everything's only one story, and then you can have 10 stories where it's like many, many layers. So if you get that future, then yeah, you can have um, uh, things moving around, you know, at, at a high density and at high speed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what a world. <laughs> so so basically then what's then our call for 2025, 2026 then? So we have you have a prediction of 700 bucks by the end of next year. That's my I prediction. have a I have a thousand. Yes, yes. And then but that's uh, I could see it going to 1500, 2000 if the full fast as you can, you know, million car robotax thing happens, then that 30 billion dollars plus, you know, $10 billion for energy, $20 billion for cars. You can rapidly get to a $60, $70 billion number. Plus, the PE could really shoot up because the margins on the robotaxi business, they would see, okay, yes, I got a big number, but the growth and the uh, margins would be so high, then it would start shooting up. Um, yeah, so I've I've since I came out with my 700 number and I've re tried to remember to always repeat this. My yeah. 700 number has a caveat. And the caveat yeah. is depending on the rollout of RoboTaxi. So, depending on the timing and the number involved in the rollout, it could be substantially more than $700 to your point. So, we're we're in 100% agreement on that. Now, there's another caveat to it as well, and that's what if the street decides that uh, Optimus is a thing, and it, mm -hmm. and it may not require them to start selling them yet, because if it's uh, I, the way I put it the other day was if if Elon shows. 50, 70, 80, 100 out of the thousand or 2000 or 3000 that might be working there, if they just go around and show them doing different tasks, yeah. not just not just pick and place, but drilling things in uh, soldering, um, uh, welding. Um, picking up entire pieces of a car and putting it in place while somebody else, you know, snaps the the fasteners together or another robot snaps the fasteners. I mean, if they show them doing a lot of work and doing it at speed, um, I don't think we'll have to wait for the sales to begin before the street will say, okay, we got to give that some value. 
Well, they kind of may have sold their first one with that Kim Kardashian thing, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so she gave them um, five or more tweets, each one that she normally charges $2 million a piece for, for her 500 million followers. Yeah. Um, so that may have gone out. And then did they also announce that there would be a bundle of Tesla bot and cyber cab or together or, or cyber truck thing. I heard something about some bundling where they would put say they would put together a Tesla bot with another vehicle, right? Um, so so that that kind of thing next year could could become a, yeah. a factor. Yeah, actually, you know, I know we keep going down rabbit holes, but I was also thinking this morning about the whole business of the delivery aspect of it because you know I famously only have one car now. Uh, you know, we we mm -hmm. were getting by with one car because I never go anywhere. Uh, but maybe I would like in and out for lunch today. Right. Uh, you know, and so I order up in and out. Well, somebody says, well, you know, but how are they going to get it from the car into the house? And I thought to myself, when I call an Uber, I look at my app and I watch the darn car driving around the block and I yeah. see it come up and I know where it is. I go out yeah. and I get in it. <laughs> you yeah. know. Well, why can't I go to the car at the street, open the door, pull out my in and out and go into the house? <laughs> right, right, right. Yep. I don't really need a robot to do that part. <laughs> yep. Yep. So it's and having just a robot arm that could take because the package delivery for many of the delivery services, just leave it at the yeah. curb or just up the way a bit, you know. Um, so I think it's a, a very solvable problem. <laughs> right, indeed. So we're thinking that yeah, 2025 is, is the year of RoboTaxi, and it's, um, it will could further increase the value of um, Tesla stock. And the fast rollout is definitely possible. I think that's the, the general agreement so that we too. have. I think so, too. I'm coming to that conclusion. Okay. So then next video, we're going to talk about uh, SpaceX and Tesla bots, because Elon wants to send Tesla bots and Cybertrucks uh, to Mars. And that's a, a very interesting topic. So okay. see you next time. Bye-bye.